I think for the final topic of this video now, I'll give a physical overview of the phones and the PBX. We'll start with the PBX. So, this is a Northstar 6x16 PBX, one of the smaller units. And in my opinion, this the 6x16 is the best Northstar PBX to get if you're a hobbyist that just wants to get your feet wet with this stuff. Because I think it's the easiest um, to get running. And the reason for that is, is um, because it has a built-in power supply. Um, here's the power cord coming out of it that just plugs into the wall. Um, for example, the 3x8, although the 3x8 is an even smaller system, it's got a separate power brick. It's about the size of a laptop power supply. And sometimes when you look on eBay, um, you'll find a 3x8 that has no power supply. And then you've got to buy the power supply and they're not very easy to find used and when you buy them new they're like a hundred bucks so that just sucks overall but the 6x16 has a built-in um, power supply which is very nice and also of course the 6x16 has more capacity than the 3x8 um, while still being mostly self-contained the bigger systems like the 8x24, the compact ICS and the modular ICS um, they take expansion cards and so sometimes you can find one of those systems and it doesn't actually it won't actually be functional when you get it because it's missing the base expansion cards necessary for the thing to function on a basic level i think with the 8x24 i do believe um the 8x24 has that functionality built into it and then the expansion slots are only um to expand it from that but I think with the compact ICS and the modular ICS, um, if they have no cards in them, they're not functional. So you might come across a compact ICS or a modular ICS on eBay, and if you buy it, you might find it's non-functional when you get it because it has no expansion cards in it. Um, I think that's the case with those two. Now, the 6x16 does have one risk, which I'll get to in a moment. Let's take a look at it here. So. Here's the front of the thing. This is a door that opens up to gain access to the nether regions. And if you look at the back here, well, there's nothing much going on in the back. Nice big molded Northern Telecom logo. And some uh, things there to hang it on a wall if you want to. And you can see it's, it's not very big. It's, it's not very heavy. I can barely pick it up with one hand. And it has a door. The front door opens up here. Just like that. And now you're inside the unit. Now, the one risk with a 6x16 is it's got a removable software cartridge. Um, and this software cartridge is required for the thing to work. Sometimes if you go on eBay, you can find 6x16s that do not have a software cartridge. Um, and they'll be totally non-functional. You need this for the PBX to work. All Northstar models um, had their software upgraded over time and that introduced new features um, and stuff like that. Um, the 6x16 being you know one of the original Northstar models it's I think you most commonly find them with early software versions. Mine has an early version of the software in it. For, from a hobbyist perspective, you're not really missing much if you have an early software version instead of a later software version. Um, the biggest thing for me, the biggest difference for me that I would like to have the newer software version for is that the newer software version introduced a different page tone. So one of the features of Northstar is that you can um, use one phone to page the rest of the phones and make an announcement through the loudspeaker and there's a short tone that the system plays over the speakers of all the phones when you initiate a page and they changed it with the newer versions of the Northstar software and I prefer the newer version because that's what I heard growing up in retail stores that used Northstar systems but mine has the older version unfortunately um, other really nice features you get with the newer software is you get caller ID so when someone calls on an outside line, you get the caller ID information, but you don't with the older software versions. There's one other, you know, big feature I can think of that's only in the newer software versions, 
and that's the compatibility with a product called StarTalk that Northern Telecom made. StarTalk is a uh, voicemail system that connects to the PBX and uh, it's a solid state voicemail system and I believe it only works with the newer software versions. If you have a cabinet that has a replaceable software cartridge, which is all of them except for the 3x8, the 3x8 has the software hard, you know, hard coded into it, you can't change it, um, you can upgrade the software, you can remove that cartridge and put a cartridge containing the newer um, software into it, which is very nice. Unfortunately, software cartridges are quite expensive. Um, you'll generally pay $100 to $150 for one, which is unfortunate. Honestly, the best bet, if you have something, if you have, for example, a 6x16 with an old software version and you want to upgrade it to the newer software version, your best bet is actually just to buy a whole nother 6x16 and specifically get one that has that you know has the newer software in it. That's honestly your best bet. Um, cause generally the cartridges themselves are just as much money as buying a whole PBX. So if you can buy a whole PBX that's untested and, you know, sold really cheap cause they didn't test it, but it has a software cartridge in it, dollars to donuts is, dollars to donuts is the whole PBX is going to work, but definitely you'll have a good uh, software cartridge. If you look at one of these on eBay and they didn't bother taking a picture of inside here, you just get the picture of it with the cover closed, um, ask the seller to provide a picture with the cover open. I couldn't do that with this unit. Um, they wouldn't do it for me. I asked them for another picture. They said they couldn't do it because this was being housed in a warehouse in a remote location. I think that's kind of stupid when they can shoot the first picture of it. But uh, anyway, whatever. I, I took the chance and I got lucky, fortunately. I got a good working PBX. The only risk when buying a software cartridge for a 6x16 was that later 6x16s came in two different versions, versions with and versions without a feature called Disconnect Supervision. And what Disconnect Supervision is, it's basically a feature by which if you're on a call with the outside line, with an outside line, and the person at the other end hangs up, Northstar will, will recognize that the other person hung up and Northstar will also hang up and free up the line. Um, non, the older versions of these and the newer ones that don't have disconnect supervision, they don't do that. When the other person hangs up, Northstar keeps the line open until you hang up. Because later 6x16s came with or without disconnect supervision, um, the software cartridge, you can find software cartridges that are for versions with disconnect supervision and versions without and you can't mix and match. If you have a 6x16 that's non-disconnect supervision enabled, you have to get a non-disconnect supervision enabled software cartridge or it just will not work at all. It won't boot up or anything. You can tell when a 6x16 or a 3x8 for that matter has disconnect supervision because this print here on the inside is blue. It's blue on white instead of white on gray. And that's also the same for the software cartridge. The software cartridge will have blue print on it. And it'll actually say DS, meaning Disconnect Supervision. So, looking at the cabinet itself here, I would remove the software cartridge to show you, but you never ever remove a software cartridge while the system is powered on, um, or really bad things could happen. But you've seen it before if you go back on my previous videos. Um, you've got a little power indicator light right there, red LED. Nice badge right there. And then this info sticker. So here we actually see the North Star name, even though it's not on the outside of the cabinet that everybody sees. And we've got some warning information here. Install KSU on a wall in a vertical position before disconnecting power, or before connecting power. Always disconnect AC power cord before installing or removing the software cartridge. 115 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, 37 watts nominal input. External paging output, so for paging not only can you page through the phones, you could also connect um, an external speaker system to this. 
and page through the speakers. External paging output, 775 millivolts RMS across 600 ohms. They give you that information so you can make sure that your paging amplifier is going to be compatible with the signal that this outputs. Music input impedance. So another feature of the North Star system is that you can actually connect um, an audio source to this to serve as background music. So you know how stores, a lot of stores have background music. Well, if you have a, if they have a North Star system, it's the North Star system that provides that. You can connect, you know, just about anything, um, basically anything with a line level or approximately line level audio output into this thing and uh, it can play through the phones or it can play through the paging speakers and you have your background music and it also works as hold music on an outside call which is very cool so this just tells you gives you the specifications for that so you can make sure that uh, your music source will work well with it 3300 ohms nominal input impedance with one volt RMS recommended input level and there it says key telephone system and we have FCC regulations. I'm going to turn my light on. Should have done that before. FCC regulations. Oh, it automatically turned off. Okay. And here we go. The warranty sticker here. Made in Canada. And there's the actual model number. The 6x16 has the model number NT5B01. The 3x8 is NT5B05. And it's useful to look those up. If you're looking for these on eBay, sometimes people list them by the model number rather than the model name. And this one, the warranty expired in June of 1990. Made in Canada by Northern Telecom. Just about all of Northern Telecom stuff um, was made in Canada, which is super nice. And certainly a testament to why these things just never break. And the phones never break. They're just manufactured really well. Here we have a little slot where we can insert our documentation. So there's a programming record here which shows how it was set up. And a little bit of a, well, there's a glossary on here describing all the different terms. And yeah, this is an extension of the programming record. We'll take a look at these documents in a future video. And then here is the RJ21 cable, standardized cable, sometimes called an amphenol cable, um, because amphenol, which sounds like a drug, but it was actually the name of a company, amphenol was the company um, that was the biggest manufacturer of these, but it's an RJ21 cable, and that connects the uh, phones and everything else to the PBX. So RJ21 cable is a cable that has 25 pairs of wires, so 50 wires total, and uh, two wires connect to each phone. On the phone side, the connection is nothing more than an ordinary telephone cable. Each of these phones, I have a telephone cable plugged into them. I bought these at the dollar store. So I've got a dollar store telephone cable. And at the other end, I've just wired it into the end of the RJ21 cable. And that's all you need. Um, in a proper um, telephone installation, um, the RJ21 cable would have all the wires connected to a punch block, a punch down block, which is a special, you know, block for telecommunications use that is meant for, you know, connecting the really fine gauge wires. Um, so there's no stripping required, no soldering or anything. You use a special tool to punch the wires into the punch down block and connect everything up. Um, if you look on eBay, you can buy used punch down blocks, but they're really expensive and the tools are kind of expensive as well. You don't need it. I say you don't need it. Um, if you're doing this for a hobby, um, you know, and the telecom purists are going to hate me for saying this, but you don't need that fancy crap. All I've done is solder the individual wires, um, and that's literally all you need. Um, you can, actually, a viewer suggested this on an earlier video, and thank you to that viewer for suggesting this, because it's a great idea. 
Um, they suggested using 3M butt splice um, connectors because you don't need to strip the wires and it's hard to strip the wires that fine. Um, but with these 3M splice connectors, you just stick the wires in and you turn a nut and it, it uh, the contacts punch down through the insulation of the wires and connect it that way really easily. And I looked and they're fairly cheap to buy, so yeah, by far I'd recommend those. But if you're in a pinch and you don't have the equipment, uh, soldering works just fine. My solder job's still holding up for both of these phones. And I also connected an audio jack for the background music. I do have background music set up on this, so I can just plug this into an iPod or a phone or anything, and whatever sound plays through it goes to the phones. If I have music turned on, you can see I actually have a music button programmed into each of these. So that's very cool. Also, I think the last thing to show on this is these are the six ports where your outside lines plug in. They're ordinary RJ11 telephone jacks. So again, any dollar store telephone line is going to work just fine. And uh, yeah, that's it's pretty simple, easy to do. You thread your each of your lines down through these uh, little retainers here, and then through the side, and then out the bottom with the other cables. Only the 3x8 and the 6x16 have these discrete RJ11 jacks. Um, the bigger North Star systems are actually going to have a second Amphenol connector, and that'll be for the outside lines. So you have two Amphenol connectors. Now, now look at me. I've I've always said RJ21, and now I've got myself saying Amphenol. You have two RJ21 connectors: one for the phones and the background music and everything, and then one for the outside lines. While I was editing this video, I discovered something that I accidentally missed and forgot to talk about. Um, if you look right here, below the RJ21 connector, there's another RJ11 connector. And it's marked ET, and that's for what Northern Telecom calls the emergency telephone. What you plug into that is an ordinary POTS phone, and when the power goes out, and Northstar will stop functioning with no power. You can't use any of the Northstar phones. Um, when the power goes out, a normally closed relay will close and connect the POTS phone connected to that jack straight to outside line one, if I remember right. But it's one of the outside lines. I think it's outside line one. So when the power goes out, relay closes, connects that emergency telephone, which is just an ordinary POTS phone. In fact, Northern Telecom recommends either a Western Electric 500 or a Western Electric 2500 or equivalent phone. It connects it straight to one of the outside lines. So when the power goes out, you still have at least one telephone that's still functional. So very neat feature um, and a, a good way to uh, to make use of a POTS phone. It's not connected to the North Star system in any way. When the power is on, that phone is totally disconnected. You can't use it in any way with the system. But when the power goes out, that phone is directly connected to a POTS line for uh, emergency use if required. So very neat feature. So that's a look at my North Star 6x16 cabinet. Close that back up. And let's take a look at the phones. Um, there are four different models, actually five different models, of North Star phone. The two that you see here are the two most common type and the most easy to buy today. And, uh, well, first of all, before I describe the different models, I should describe all the common features between all the North Star phone models. Um, they all use the same type of handset. And they all have this little place here um, for a North Star feature card to go. North Star features are accessible by pressing the feature button, which is right here, and the two one or two digit code to activate that feature. So that could be paging, um, transferring a call, speed dial, stuff like that. 
Um, all Northstar phones are hands-free capable, so they all have a big hands-free speaker right here, and this is also used um, for the ringer and for beeping and stuff like that. And they all have a hands-free microphone built into them, which is not this. I think these were designed for this to look like the hands-free microphone. They are not. The hands-free microphone is a tiny condenser microphone, which is about right here. This is purely decoration. All North Star phones have a display, LCD display built into them. And a uh, feature button you already saw. The release button here, this is what you use to... It's basically a cancel button, so if you're in a menu or or you have a, some sort of prompt on the display, you can hit that just to cancel whatever and get back to the normal standby mode. But the primary function of release is to actually hang up a call. So if you're on a call, you can hang up just by... Oops, excuse me. You can hang up a call just by hanging up the handset. Or, you can hang it up by pressing release. And uh, then you can hang up the handset, or you can actually just leave it off the hook. It, the phone will still work just fine. But the purpose for this, the purpose for having a release button as opposed to just hanging up the handset is, well, first of all, if you're in hands-free mode, the handset's already hung up. So, um, you can hang up a hands-free call by lifting it up and then putting it back down, but that's kind of dumb. But a really good function for the release button is, if you're making a page, um, you you can use the handset to make a page but then when you're done your page you can hit the release button and then hang up the handset and that way people don't have to hear all the loud plastic clacking as you're hanging up the handset um, and so the release button just makes for a really nice clean break um, people only hear a soft popping noise with the connection released so that's very nice in that manner. Um, you have a hold button, and it's just like a hold button on any telephone. It, it hold, puts the call on hold. It works for internal or external calls. And here's your number pad. It's like the number pad on any telephone, except take a look at this. This is really just strange. Zero has the letters Q and Z on it, which uh, I think normally seven would be P, Q, R, S, and nine would be W, X, Y, Z but they put Q and Z on on the zero button here which is just really strange um, and here is your uh, volume control so you can adjust the ringer volume the handset volume or the loudspeaker volume and finally you have these keys here these are programmable keys you can actually program these to do just about anything you want you can make them a speed dial, so you just press a key and it starts calling someone, either internal or external. Uh, or you can program them for different functions. For example, as you saw, I have one programmed for music, background music here. I have a button that goes right to page, so I don't... Normally to page you have to press feature 60. Um, but here I just press the page button and it immediately pages and uh, yeah that's that's really nice so the phone is called the M7208 um, the 08 means there's eight programmable keys so yeah it's very nice you can program these to do just about anything there are keys that are mandatory um, however many outside lines you have set up um, there will be a line for each of those uh, outside lines um, you can program some North Star phones to only access some of the available lines. For example, if you have a phone that's, you know, in the middle of a retail store that's meant only really for internal use, and you only want one outside line programmed into it, even though you have more than one outside line available, you can do that and just have the one line. But however many lines you have set up for each phone, um, there will be one line key for each line. And the other mandatory line is if you have the hands-free function enabled, um, by default it's disabled for each phone. If you have it enabled, you have a hands-free button at the very bottom here and that's a mandatory key. It can't be placed somewhere else and it can't be removed unless hands-free is actually disabled. But the rest of the keys can be programmed to do just about anything you want, which is very nice. They have removable key caps. Some of the keys, obviously, you can see, have printing 
um, printed on them and some of them you can stick a little piece of paper in them and write anything you want on them so that's very cool so this is the M7208 phone um, it's one of the most common types of North Star phones you'll find it was by far the um, workhorse of all the North Star phones just the most common one the other type which is you know another really common one is the M7310 um, named so because it has 10 programmable keys but as you can see here it's got these 12 extra programmable keys here and each key can have two functions programmed into it. This is a shift button so each key can have a function that you'd write on the bottom here that's activated when you just press the key or a function which you'd label on the top half which is activated when you oops, which is activated when you press shift and the button so that's very cool and they, these can be programmed to do anything you want they're just like these keys the only difference is these keys have little triangle indicators here that light up to show you when a feature is active or a function is active whereas these ones don't but uh, otherwise they're just like these keys so you have 10 and then 12 times 2 is 24 20, you have 34 a total of 34 programmable keys which is very cool another um, extra feature of the M7310 phone is has these three soft keys um, the display is a two line display you can see here um, there you can see the bottom line there so whereas this one only has a single line display this one is the two line and you have these soft keys here that can be used to activate features written on the bottom line of the display and other than that it's pretty much the same it's got all the same keys and all the same uh, features here you can see this phone has been rebranded instead of the Meridian logo it's actually got the Bell Canada logo on it which is pretty cool and each model of phone could be either white or black oh you can't say the word black that's racist of course I can fucking say the word black this is it's black um, there were some limited edition runs made I've seen a red North Star phone, someone else on YouTube, not active on YouTube anymore, uh, made a video showing a red North Star phone, which I think is really cool. I believe there were there was like a blue one as well. But uh, yeah, they must be very rare because I've never seen one outside of um, those videos. So another model of North Star phone was the M7100. Um, it was the most basic model of the bunch. It had only one programmable key so these were phones that were only put in you know really basic service or in a position where possibly a public um, person would use that phone like a member of the public and so you wouldn't need any of these programmable keys um, but yeah that's the really that's the most basic model of the phone and then another model of the phone was called the M7324 that's a phone which had 24 programmable keys and it also had the three soft keys under the display. I'd, I'd like to get one of those someday. And the final model of phone is a really rare one. Um, and they're hard to find, they're expensive to find. And I question whether it'd be possible to get one working even if you did find one. It's called the M7410 and it's just like the M7310 but it's got a cordless handset. So it's literally a cordless North Star phone. You had an antenna coming out of the phone, and instead of a wired handset here, it was a cordless phone, and the cordless phone had its own display and its own set of keys. So I'd really love to find one of those someday, but um, they're really hard to find. I've seen one on eBay. It was severely beaten up, and the seller was still asking like $50 for it. And of course the biggest problem is, is of course the cordless phone takes a NICAD battery and I don't know if you can buy new batteries for it anymore. But that'd be really cool to find someday. If, if I could ever find one, that'd be really cool to have. So those are the five North Star phones. Um, and actually in the late 90s, um, Northern Telecom introduced a whole new line of North Star phones. They kept making the old line but they also introduced a line of new phones 
which had modern styling. You know, they're really round and curvy, and they don't have the buttons that you can label. Instead, the buttons were just beside a uh, a paper, a panel of paper that you could label. And yeah, they're really different in design, but they function the exact same way. And they're compatible with any North Star cabinet. All the North Star phones are compatible with all the North Star cabinets, including these newer generation of phones. Um, I don't like them. I'll never get one. Um, I hate the styling. I think these look way cooler. But uh, you can get them if you want, and uh, um, they work just the same. Now, what I recommend if you get a North Star system to play around with, an absolute must-have, you must have at least one M7310 or M7324 phone. And the reason is because having the three soft keys makes it so much easier um, to program the PBX, to go through all the menus and program all the, all the features and parameters of operation. You can do it on a 7208, but it's way harder um, because more of the programmable keys here are dedicated to navigation keys when you're in the programming mode. And there's an actual template, there's a template for both of these phones. Um, there's an actual template and overlay that you put over the programmable keys and it shows what each key does in the programming mode. But it's pretty easy to figure out without the template with this phone because you now have these three soft keys um, that are able to take over some of the functions. So I recommend absolutely a must have is at least one 7310 or M7324 phone um, to make it easier to program the system. I guess the last thing to talk about in this video is what can you expect to pay for everything if you want to try out this stuff? Well, the biggest expense is going to be the PBX. Um, I got mine at the absolute lowest you could ever hope to find one of these. I paid about $35 for this shipped. Um, and that's because the seller had no clue about it, no clue if it worked. They had one really crappy photo of it. And I just took the chance and... Uh, and bought it and I got lucky um, and you can possibly get lucky too um, if you find if you well I was gonna say if you see one that's really cheap but if you see any one of these the most important thing is to make sure it's got the software cartridge in it what I paid for this is the absolute cheapest you could ever hope um, to get one of these for generally um, expect to pay probably around sixty eighty a hundred dollars for one that's been untested um, or at least you know they say pulled from a working installation um, which basically means the seller didn't test it themselves but it was in working condition when it was pulled from service um, for one that was tested by the seller expect to pay as much as two hundred three hundred dollars for one of these um, you can get one for under a hundred pretty easily um, the 6x16 are the cheapest ones to get. The compact ICS and modular ICS, they're going to be the most expensive ones. I don't recommend you look at them anyway because it's too easy to buy, accidentally buy ones that aren't actually functional because they don't have the required um, uh, uh, expansion cards in them. Um, 8x24, I don't know. I've never looked up prices for those. The 3x8 generally goes for more money than the 6x16 because the 3x8 is a newer PBX and so a 3x8 will almost always have the newer software in it. 3x8 um, you, you'll pay starting at you know $120, $150, um, stuff like that. Um, the RJ21 cable, you have to be careful, you need to get a cable that has a female RJ21. Uh, connector on it, not a male connector. The connector on the PBX is male, so you need a female cable. Um, if you're in the United States, you can get one for under 20 bucks. Um, I got mine for about 35 bucks shipped to Canada. As for the phones, they're not too expensive. I paid, I think, about $10 shipped for this one and about $30 shipped for this one. This one was the absolute cheapest on eBay. Um, it did not meet the description when I got it. It was missing keycaps. I had to buy a North Star literature pack to replace the missing keycaps. Um, and it was pretty filthy and stuff like that. It was 10 bucks. 
This one, I got it just as you see it right now, absolutely perfect, very mint, um, 30 bucks shipped. Um, the 7208 and the 7310 are the, you know, the cheapest ones to buy. The 7324, you can sometimes find them fairly cheap. Um, if you want one of these that's, you know, been refurbished and is in mint condition, you'll sometimes pay $40, $50 shipped for a single phone. But I say don't pay any more than like 30 shipped for one of these. And yeah, so th these aren't hard to buy at all. There's tons of these on eBay. And there's, um, you know, quite a number of the PBXs as well. Um, like I said earlier in this video, um, it, it can be helpful to search by the model number of the PBX rather than the name of it. So if you're looking for a 6x16, search not only 6x16, but also search NT5B01 which is the Northern Telecom model number for this. And you might find some more that way. Oh, I guess the last part would be the telephone, you know, cables that I have here. And those were at the dollar store. So just ordinary telephone cables. So that's about all there is to talk about with this for this introductory video about my Northern Telecom North Star phone system. Um, the next video is going to show how to actually set one of these up, how to wire up the phones um, and initialize everything when you turn it on for the first time, um, how to wire everything to the RJ21 cable, stuff like that. So that'll be the next video and uh, that's it for now. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later.